walking smooth life. Thank you for the reminder. Okay, we begin Rambam, chapter eight. We're discussing the laws of Sefer Torah, of Torah scroll. Oop, we're scrolling. Now, it's very important that the very letters of the Torah be written appropriately, but what we're going to learn over here, interesting, is that the actual um, look of the page is also something uh, very crucial. And it's based on two special uh, laws called apsucha and astuma. Apsucha comes from the word open, stuma comes from the word closed. The, the basic idea, and I'm going to first show it here. This is the idea of a psucha, that when you have a line that's written and you have enough space for nine letters, minimum nine letters left over on the line, then you start the next verse, next passage on the next line. If you have only space for a few letters, but not nine, a whole empty space, empty line, and then you start the next on the, um, the, the following line that it begins at the beginning of the third line. Let's do that halacha inside now. I showed it to you, so it'll be clear when we read it inside. Parsha psucha yesh la surais. The uh, two forms of uh, passage are written in for the psucha. So if one completes in the first verse and there's in the middle of the line and there's enough nine letters sufficient that would be a remainder at the end, the end of the line that's empty, then you begin the next verse on the beginning of the following line. As we explained in the first instance over here, that was the first halacha here. When are we speaking about? Only when there is nine letters space that is remaining, nine or more, but not less. If, however, the empty space is very small that at the end of, the, of that line, so then one needs to leave the next line completely empty and you begin at the very beginning of the next, of the third line, as over here, as we explained. Halacha Bey, second halacha. Um, okay. Labels everything okay here with the? No, it's it's not letting me. Uh, when I click, it uh, it it holds it down the click. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So maybe I should do it then. Yeah. Oh, where, oh, so it's okay. All right. So I'm gonna do it from. Okay, Parsha Stuma Yeshla. There are three forms when it comes to the passage of what's called a stuma. Stuma, the word means closed. Let me explain what it means closed over here. I'm going to show you first. If you start and you have a passage right to left, and then you finish the passage, and then it is a stuma, a samach is a stuma. There's nine letters left over then you can start the next passage, the next verse on the same line. Or another is that it's at the end that there is still nine left. Here it's in the middle. The second possibility is at the end of the line. And then there isn't maybe nine over here. Let's say there's seven letters and two over here. So you start the second line, the next passage in the, you know, somewhere at the beginning of the line, but not at the beginning of the line. 
And then the third possibility is that it's complete all the way the verse till the end of the first line. Then you have to start over here, nine letters in, and that gives you a third option on how you make a stuma. Stuma means closed. We can see it's kind of sandwiched. It's sandwiched over here. It's sandwiched over here between two verses and sandwiched over here between two verses. And each time it only begins in the middle of the, uh, uh, of uh, the second passage begins in the middle of the line. Let's see it inside. Uh, there are three forms uh, when it comes to a stuma. The first one is im gamar be emsa hashita meniach revach kishiru maschilich tei b'seif hashita teva achas mitzchil safarshe shehu stuma adi imsa harevach be emsa. So the first manner is that you you when you complete in the middle of the line, then one should leave as we mentioned empty space nine letters worth and begin writing at least one word on the passage in the end of that line, right? Therefore, it will be space in the middle of the line as we, as we showed. Uh, that's one possibility. Uh, sorry. So the second possibility, as uh, as we showed over, oh, what's going on here? As we showed over here, second possibility, as you wrote, there isn't enough li nine lines of uh, words over here. So you have to start over here with a few letters, and then you're starting here in the middle, or at least not at the not flush on the right. That is the point over here. So the third possibility, you wrote the passage and it goes all the way to the end. And now you have to make space over here, nine letters. So what comes out? Apsucha will always be flush right. There will always be space at the end or a complete line space. Uh, stuma means closed, so it's closed on two sides, like over here. It will never be flush right, or no, flush right, not flush left, sorry, flush right. You will always start the second passage somewhere not from the, uh, from the right side. Okay, that is... Suchan Stuma. You can see them in a Sefer Torah, uh, or you can see them in a Chumash, rather, not in a Sefer Torah, but you can see them in a Chumash with a Samach or a Pei uh, in the Torah. Halacha Gimel, three. Sefer She'ene Megun Muga Be'emolei Ve'chaser Efshe L'sakne L'hagiyai K'meshe B'yarnu. A Torah scroll that, regarding the long and short forms of letters, as we mentioned with a Vav or a Yud, um, they need to be corrected and checked, as we've explained previously. In contrast, So when it comes to if you're missing a letter or you have to add a letter, that can be fixed because you can fix that letter. Uh, you can fix that word. But when it comes to the stuma or the psucha, uh, when, and you did it incorrectly, if you made from a psucha stuma or a stuma a psucha, uh, and you didn't leave the proper amount of space or start from uh, flush right if it is a psucha, uh, or in the middle of the line, if it is a stuma, in those instances, or in the form of the pages when it comes to shira shirim, or uh, to not shira shirim, sorry, uh, uh, to azinu, um, and az yashir, then it is disqualified. And what you have to do is remove that entire column because you can't fix it. That has not, a, a, you don't have a chance to fix that. Okay.
Halacha four. Well, the fish are easy. She a bush godol. The whole has svarim shariyiti bedvarim eila. So I've seen the Rambam says, and he's writing now in, in in a personal manner that I've seen great confusion in these matters in all the Torah scrolls. Um, similarly, the masters of tradition who have written down and composed the text. So he says, So he says there, you know, there is a, 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 a some kind of divide regarding the scrolls about how to make the stumas and the psuchas. So I, he says, I have seen fit that I have to write down the entire list over here of these passages in the Torah that are, again, stumais, meaning closed, psuchais, open, and also all the forms of the songs and that they're written also in a cer certain, what's called surah sadaf, a certain positioning and look on the page. And in this manner, all the scrolls can be corrected and checked against this principle one that I have used. And what is that principle one that he has used? He says, Allah So he says, the scroll on which I rely to make sure that there's a proper clarification on these matters is a scroll that is renowned from Egypt, which includes 24 of the Bible books that were all written in scrolls. And they were kept in Jerusalem and Yerushalayim for many years so that the scrolls could be checked based on this one. Everyone relies upon it. Why? Because he said, so you call same Kalim Shagia by Ben Asher, because it was this very holy Jew. His name was Ben Asher, the dictate by Shani Mirabim, and he checked it over for many years. And he is very precise. He spent years checking with many Sefer Torahs. And I rely on this scroll when I wrote the Torah scroll according to law. And now he goes through all of the five books of Moses, which we won't go through all of the psuchos and stumais from the book of, uh, of, of Bereshis, the, uh, and then we have the book of Exodus, uh, Shmois, we have the book of Vayikra, and then we have the book of Bamidbar, and the book of Devarim, which we just started now, and he ends off saying over here, you know how many there are of these? Oops, one second. All together. Oops, this is Vorim. In the entire Torah, there are 290 passages that are psuchais, open. 317 passages are stumas that are closed. 669 passages in their entirety. Again, you can see it in a chumash, there will be a pei or a sama, and that will show you that there needs to be the, the space between that verse and the following one. Okay. Now we're going to continue. Okay, you can go the that, next, and if you want to go the, to, uh, do that all on your own, the 669 of them, by all means do that. But we'll do that. You can do that on, uh, on your own. Okay. Now it continues. There are certain things in the Torah that this is the form, he says, the song Hazinu. Hazinu is one of the, uh, the last Torah portions of, uh, in the book of Devarim, of Deuteronomy. And so he says, Kol shita v'shita yesh be'emsa revach echa kitsuris aparsha hastuma. So he, let me give you the example over here. You see down here, number three. See number three? This is, each verse is written like this, and then there's space in between. And then the next, and then the second half of the verse. Verse, space for nine letters, and then that's how the Hazinu is written. So it comes out that every line is divided into two, and it's written in 70 lines. And now he goes through the 70 lines, how they all begin. Um, the first word on each line, and then he now goes into 
the format of Az Yashir, which we say every day in our prayer service right before Yishtabach. And this is uh, the way it looks over here. The first line is written complete. You can see it right across Az Yashir, Maishu Ben Israel. And then it's Lamor, nine letter space. And then in the middle, Asher El Hashem, Kigoy Go'o, nine letter space. One word at the end, Sus. And then starting again, um, then there is a few words, and then there's a nine letter space in between. So what we have is every second, every second line is the same after the first line that you have um, on the uh, uh, Lamor, and then you have Ashira, Sus, that is um, two different spaces on the same line. Then on the next line, on the third line, you see there's just one space. And this is the way it needs to look in the Sefer Torah. In our prayer book, of course, it's not looking like that, but that is in the Sefer Torah. So, uh, so the first line is Kedarke, the way it is normally written. And this is the way it looks. Okay. So we conclude now this chapter. And uh, we're, we're not going to go into all of the, the, the beginnings and the ends of those uh, words. You can see that for yourself. It's very important that when you're writing the Torah, every letter on every line um, has to be written one letter next to the next letter. However, you have to be very careful that it should not touch it. But it shouldn't be too distant from it either. That it shouldn't look like it's two words. But there should be between one letter and another letter, like a, a hairbreadth. So how do we test it? And how do we know that it's really one word and not two words? We need to get a child there, if we ever have a doubt, that isn't proficient in knowing words, because if they know words, they'll, they'll see it as a word, but they're proficient in letters, and they're proficient enough to see the letters and perhaps make out the word, but they're not so clear on it. And we ask them, is this one word or is this two words? And if it seems like two words when it's supposed to be one word because the letters are not close enough, then it is invalid and it needs to be fixed. That is the end of chapter eight. Continue now with chapter nine, my dear son, Label. Okay, some more halachas, some more laws of how you write a Sefer Teira, how it's supposed to be done, um, different technical details. Um, and uh, so that way, when you see a Sefer Teira, you'll see how you'll, you'll appreciate how much work goes into writing a Sefer Teira. Keep in mind that to write a Sefer Teira takes a scribe about a year. A year of full time, a full time job um, to write a full Sefer Torah. Um, okay, so Halacha Aleph, Halacha number one. In Eisen Sefer Torah, lo arko yaser ale kefei v'lo yekefei yaser yaser al rachvei. So, so when you make a Torah scroll, when you write a Torah scroll, it shouldn't be written in a way that the length exceeds its circumference or its circumference exceeds its length. He explains what's the appropriate length. Yeah, the kama he archai. What's the appropriate length? The bigvil. When it comes to a gvil, so depending on the on the different types of tar- parchments. So bigvil shishot vachim. There's six handbreadths. Shehem arba ve'esrim etzboyis brechav agudel shalyad, which is six handbreadths is twenty four um, finger sizes of the thumb. And when it comes to a klaf, which is the other type of parchment, which is a thinner parchment, I think, um, it's it's it could be less or it could be more. And the width should be um, as its circumference. If he did it on a gvil and he did it less than six tvachim, less than six handbreadths, and therefore by that he made his, the, the writing smaller, a yes or al shisha, or he did it bigger than six, and he made the, the writing, the, the font uh, bigger, so that should be, that it should be, that it should fit properly, or is it a mitzvah? So then it's proper. So that's the idea that depending on how big it is, that's how big you make the font. Um, and, and if you ever saw a small safer 
Sefer Torah versus a regular size Sefer Torah. I never saw a big Sefer Torah, a regular size Sefer Torah. Um, so you see that it's very, very, that it's much, much smaller. And it's obviously much harder to write a smaller Sefer Torah. You could see that more in a mezuzah, that some are written bigger and some are written smaller. Obviously, that it, the, depending on the size of the parchment, that's the size of the font that the, that the Sefer is going to sit down and write. Now, Halacha Beis, Shir Hagilia. So there, there's margins, obviously, um, when, you, when you're writing a Sefer so there's margins on the side. So Milamata, on the bottom of, the bottom margin should be Arba Etzbeis, four finger sizes. Ulamayla, um, Ulamayla, um, and on the top should be Shalash Etzbeis, should be the size of three fingers. Obein Daf Ledaf, and between column and column, right, because you have one piece of parchment and you'll have multiple columns in it, so in between the two columns, you should have the, the size of two fingers. Therefore, so in the beginning of every roll of parch, every page of parchment, like we mentioned, that has many columns. So in the beginning of, of each parchment and at the end of each parchment, that you have to have you have to have the empty space, meaning the 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 the, the this on the side, the margin should be a size of one finger and also on top of that will take fira enough to tie uh, to, to sew it together with the parchment before so then when you so when you when you sew the two pieces of parchment together then you'll see between from this column to the next column you're going to have you'll have two fingers because you're going to leave one on each side and you should leave from the from the uh, from the uh, from the skin. B'tchilas a sefer, b'sefer ekte ligleil as am al amud that you should leave at the beginning before breishis and at the end of the zayis bracha. You should leave enough space that it should be able to roll on the on the piece of wood. V'chol shiur na elul mitzvah and and uh, these are all 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 of these calculations um, are part of the mitzvah. But be mchiser a heiser. But if you did a little less, you did a little bit more. Like puzzle, it did not become in validated number three halacha gimel how should he how should a person uh, think about it how should he structure it so that it should be in the proper sizing so so first of all he makes sure to uh, to, to make all the parchments equally um that when when he's when he's when he's making the parchments and uh, and it should be and and the the size of it should be six tvachim six hand breaths cats of echod lechol echod um and uh, and and uh, and cats of what's cats of that's what maybe i said each 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 having equal amount one one size for all of them. And then he rolls the the, the skins b'shave all equally. And he makes them um, one 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 size. And then he should and and the process of making it into parchment of 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 of, of stretching it etc. Should make sure that it comes out to be six hand breaths. And he measures it with a red with a red string um, that that uh, goes around uh, all of the, the this the, the whole uh, the whole size. Halacha Dalit number four. Vach kach yasekone shove, and afterwards he makes a, a, a one one stick that is that is equal. Ye arka yar boim oy chamishum et boys. The it, it, the height of it should be forty or fifty fingers. And he should split it into two or three or four uh, uh, parts. And if she, that way he will know all the different, like basically, like a measuring tape. This is uh, the first measuring tape. And he should use the same measuring stick for all for each one. So that way you'll know how many fingers how uh, you have, what size is each piece of leather, each piece of skin. And then he'll know also the total amount of space that he has between all the skins, between all of the, um, the parchments. And then, and then he takes uh, takes another two or three to check the size of the of the writing of the font, and he writes one column. 
ודבר ידוע שערך הדף שווה שעץ בויס, and it's a known thing that the, that the length of the, of the column is 17 fingers, ופי שהוא מניח גיליון למיילו שולש, ופי שהוא מניח גיליון למיילו שולש ולמטה ארבע, because he puts, there, as we mentioned in the beginning of this chapter, that there's, there's, there's a space on the top of three fingers and a space on the bottom of four fingers, אבל רכב הדף הוא לפי הכסף, but the, this, the, the rest of it, meaning the middle where he's going to write, not the empty part uh, uh, on the top and on the bottom, but it, 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 that's the margins, the empty margins. But in the middle, it's going to be based on how, 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 uh, how big he writes, the kind of font that he writes with. Uh, not the font, the size of the font. Um, he's going to write a thick one, he's going to write a thin. Um, and the, the amount of lines also is going to be based on his writing. Because also in between each line, you have to have a space. And we mentioned yesterday that the line in between is the size of the line. So if he's going to write a little bit bigger, so then it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Number six. After he wrote his first line, his first uh, column, and that way he could see how he's going to write it. Then he then he measures it again. And then he adds on top of that how the, the the two fingers that's going to be in between the space of two fingers is going to be in between column and column. And then he has to make a calculation how many columns he's going to be writing in order to write a safe table. And then we'll know the calculation. And then, he, and, and, and then he makes a calculation and he, and he and he and the calculation goes like this. also like call title writing the whole title based on this amount of columns. So then if he has enough space in the in the uh, in the parchment that he created that he made, it's good. But if he if his calculation it comes out to be that he has more space on the parchment than writing the whole Torah, so then so then you should you should uh, you should write bigger, you should write longer. And until he real until in, until he'll fit, so to speak, in into the into the parchment that he's that he prepared. If the, the if based on his calculation now, the the Torah writing the whole Torah is going to be more than the parchment. He's going to need more than parchment. You might accept, so then he should write smaller. So he basically practices on another piece of paper, another piece of parchment until he gets to the right uh, to the right size, and then he should copy from that size. Number seven. Once he knows the width of the of, of the column, and the size of the letters, so he starts with that. And then he 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 uh, he makes he takes all the parchments and he and he makes he starts making the sirtut, which means the line. We mentioned that it has to have a line, which is like a scratch in the in the parchment. And it, the width. That that line should be the width of the column. Should make sure that 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 line is the exact width that he calculated. Should be the width of the way he's going to write his whole safe data. And if at the end there's left over three three fingers worth or four um, more than the than the last page. That, uh, that he should leave uh, he should leave that that part um, and, uh, and 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 the rest he should he should sew it uh, he should have the, he should have that amount for sewing sorry the, the end amount he should have for sewing because he need a little bit of space to sew it and then he could cut off the rest and he shouldn't and shouldn't be worried about that um, he doesn't have to worry about having extra because he made a calculation and he'll have the proper amount of calculation um, to write a proper safe data. Number eight. 
Vechena, right? So last is Reichav, a Sefer, Yaisa Mishisha, Ipach Mishisha. If someone wants to make the width more than six, we talked about it, that it, that it should be, um, it should be six hand breaths, right? Um, so if someone wants to do it more than six or less than six, um, you should still use that same calculation. Um, and you should make sure that the width is the same as the circumference. Um, but make sure that you don't mess up on the calculation because then you won't be able to write a proper safe data. Make sure that the calculation is done in a proper manner. Allah test number nine. This Reichab. finger, we oh. hmm? test is Reichab. Yeah, Reichab. Yeah, Reichab. Yeah, Reichab. No. I don't know. In uh, mine, it's uh, Etzba Amura. Yes, what do you have over there? Reichel Hagudel. Oh, okay. It's, it's the same. It's the same. It's uh, okay. I mean, the Rav It's uh, but it's the same concept. Etzba Amura Bechol This, 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 this Etzba that we've been talking about, the finger size that we've been talking about, which is Reichav Hagudel that the Rambam already mentioned, is the size of the of the thumb, right? Um, so this thumb breath that we mentioned. So Bechol Hashiurin and all of the Shiurin. Hello, Bishar Shiure Taira. Yeah, so, okay, now we're back on. So, yeah, so it's a, a different, uh, different nusach in the Rambam Lam. Um, so, it's, uh, and it's, when when we talk about this this hand this finger breath or this thumb breath um, in this Shiurim, so Kula Ureicha Vagudol Habeinani. So it's talking about. <laughs> Here he changes it from Google Google to Etzba and over, and over there Etzba to Google. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Etzba means finger, Google means thumb. So uh, either way, when we're talking about the, the, the finger size, we're talking about the thumb. So it's it's talking about the average thumb. Uh, and we already discussed this. We we already talked this about this in the previous chapters about the size, about the about the amount. And so new shevas and we found that it is the size of uh, of, of of seven barleys, pieces of barley, bainis, average ones. pushing them together tightly. And it's two barleys if you put them the other the the, the length, the long way. And any hand breath that we talk about is we're talking about the arba voice, four fingers, mizu Ama, and whenever we talk about an ama, it is shisha tvachim, it is six hand breaths. That's an ama. So these are the different sizes that we've been talking about. Allah yud number 10. Sefer Teresh Zavtiani. So the Rabbah says that there is a Sefer that I wrote, and this is the way I did it. So Reichav called daf daf midaf of arba and the, 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 the width of every column is, is four. Uh, fingers, Vishira Sayam, Vishira Sazinu. And as we, as in the previous chapter, my father mentioned that when it came to the Shira, so you do it a little bit differently and you need extra space. So then, Rechav Kaldaf Mishtan Sheshit's voice. So then it's one and a half times an, a, 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 the, the other column um, to give extra space to be able to space them out nicely, um, to make it look like a Shira, to make it look like a poem, to make it look like a song. Ominyan Hashitin. Shebechol daf v'daf, and the amount of lines on every column was achas v'chamishim fifty-one. Omini and adapin shokol hasefer, and the amount of columns in the whole sefer Torah that the Rambam wrote was masayim v'shisha v'esrim daf, two hundred and six, two hundred and twenty-six columns in the sefer Torah. Vayirach kol hasefer, and the 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 width of the whole sefer is elav v'shloish meis v'shishim v'shesh etz beis bekedav, is a thousand three hundred and sixty-six. Uh, finger sizes. Now, if uh, how many how many item is that? Right? How many pieces of barley is that? <laughs> that times six. Times two. Hello it's, uh, side by side. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. If it's the width. Halacha yer aleph number eleven. Elu hashesh etz boys hayesedes becheshven. And there's six extra fingers, uh, finger breaths, uh, thumb breaths uh, that, that come up in the Cheshman. So the Rambam says, if you're going to look at the calculation I just told you before, and then you're going to look at my calculation, you're going to say, one second, the Rambam, you have extra six finger breaths. <laughs> if you're going to check it out, you can see there's an extra six. So said, here's why there's an extra six. To add extra space at the beginning of the Sefer Teira and at the end of the Sefer Teira um, in order to tie it to the to, to, 
to the uh, to the wood. But it is fixed. Have no bohem, and this this the uh, this uh, the, the parchment that we wrote on it. It is alim. It is um, a, a skin from a ram. That is specifically skim from a ram. In a time that you want to write according to this way, or similar to it, even if it's a little less, two or three, one or two or three less, or yes, or, or, or one or two or three more columns. Don't worry about it. It doesn't have to be about it. You'll know that because this whole thing over here is that the length should be equal to the circumference that if it's if it's close to what i wrote don't worry you're good halacha yud is number 12 so now Yeria is one piece of parchment. And one piece of parchment will have multiple columns on it. But you can't have one column on a one parchment. It has to be more. So it has to be at least three and not more than eight per parchment. If all of a sudden you have a piece of parchment and it's a bigger, you manage to get a bigger piece of parchment and it's going to have nine columns on it because keep in mind, we already calculated how wide the columns are. So you can't make one column longer, right? It's a, it, 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 that won't work. We already calculated that. So you, so you know already. And this piece of parchment is big enough that it's going to have nine columns on it. Cut it. Cut it and put uh, four on one and five on the other. What case are we talking about? So this is talking about when you're talking about in the beginning of a safer, at the end of a safer, in the middle of a safer, middle of a, a book. Um, but at the end, um, that, that even if it's one verse, uh, you, you make it make its own column for it. And if, even if it's one, at the end of the title, at the end of it, that it's one verse, you, you tie it, you, you sew it to the previous uh, piece of parchment. Halacha yud gimel number thirteen. is when you sew the pieces of parchment to each other. Ain't teifin and eisan ella begidin shall behema that you you have to make sure you use sinews from a kosher animal or even if it wasn't slaughtered even if it died um, not without slaughtering and the same way we also use these sinews in order to tie the tefillin if you ever look closely at your tefillin you'll see that they are they are sewn together the boxes are sewn and those boxes are sewn you'll see this white it's a sinew from a uh, from a animal this we got from Moses at Mount Sinai how to do it so if you sewed the pieces of parchment together but not with these sinews or with a non-kosher animal from a non-kosher animal puzzle it's not kosher you have to take it apart and retie it re, re uh, sew it According to the halacha, halacha number fourteen, you dalit. Kesh teifin kol yiria is ain't teifin kol yiria kula mitchila vad seifa. That when you when you when you sew it, you don't do from the beginning to the end. Ela maniach meat unel ma'ila. Uh, meaning from because because they connected one to the other so it's from the it, don't don't sew it from the top all the way to the bottom a full sewing um leave it open a little bit at the top and then a little bit at the bottom uh so that shouldn't be too tight and it shouldn't rip the uh the, the, the in the middle of the parchment um, meaning if it rips it will rip it by the sewing and that you could fix easily and you should have two it's chayims one at the beginning of the Torah, one at the end of the Torah, or and as you mentioned, we leave extra space in the beginning, so that's in order to 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 to, to, to sew it to a, to a piece of wood. In order that it should be able to roll onto the um, on, onto those pieces of wood, and you should make sure that the the wording, the letters, don't start until after it starts rolling onto the uh, piece of wood. Tesvav Halacha fifteen. Sefer Torah Shnekra Ba Yiriya B'Seich Shtei Shitais. A a Sefer Torah that the uh, that 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 got ripped. The parchment got ripped, but it's in between two lines. Right, so you have a line, and you have another line, and there's a tear in the middle. So yisper, so ta- you should you should sew it. Um, but say shalish la yisper. But if it's between three, so then don't don't 
don't sell it. Medvar mamurim beyashon shein at a a a fatzay nikar. Um, this this is talking about an old Torah when he can't recognize that uh, that 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 it was that it was that it was sown. Um, avalim nikar agvil shu afutz. But if but but if you could recognize that the parchment, um, uh, that the no so. Oh, it's a certain process that's done with a certain juice. So, but if you could recognize it's done with it, that it, this process was done, so then Taifer, then you should, then you're allowed to, even if it was in three lines. Even if it's between three lines. And the same thing is between column and column, between Teva and Teva, between word and word, Yisper, so he's allowed to sew it if it got ripped. Any time you sow, um, you sow, you, you you use the same sinews as we mentioned. Make sure that you're not missing any letter, right? That it's not touching letters, you're not missing any letter, or that it should change any formation of any of the letters. Thank you. Rabbi Label, Rabbi Yosef. Oh, yeah. Moving on to chapter 10. We find that there are now, after we study studied it all, there are 20 things that make a Sefer Torah invalid. If they do have one of those 20 things, then it is considered like a Chumash that you take off the shelf and has no doesn't have the holiness of a Sefer Torah. Number one, if it was written, on the parchment of a non-kosher animal. Number two, it was written on a kosher animal, but it was not worked out, processed properly. Number three, it was worked out properly, but not for the intent of a Sefer Torah. Number four, it wasn't written on the right side, on the gvil, it was written on the side closer to the meat, uh, to the flesh, uh, and on the cloth was written to, to the part closer to the hair. Number five, Klaf was written partially on Gvil and partially on Klaf, two different types of parchments. Number six, Shinitav Al Duchsustis, it was written on a type of parchment called Duchsustis. Number seven, Shinitav it was written without the lines. Number eight, Shinitav Leshachar it was written without ink that can that can endure. Number nine, Shinitav Bishal Leshanis was written in other language. Number 10, Shiksava Apikaris, aka Tzibayim Shabbat was written by a heretic or other type of uh, people that are invalid, uh, invalid to write a Sefer Torah. Shiksava Akzaris, Belek, Avana, that God's name was written without intent. Shiksava Afil Oisachas was missing even one letter. Shiksava Afil Oisachas, you added even one letter. Shiksava Oisachas, Oisachas, two letters are touching each other. Number 15, Shiksava Atsuras Oisachas, actually, Tikari. Kol Iker Oiti Dam El Oisacheres, Beim Bikar Aksiva, Beim Menekem, Beim Mekara, Beim Be. Um, one letter was written in a way that it's unrecognizable or it's or it seems like it's a different letter. Number 16. That you put two letters next to each other. It looks like it's it's a um that it looks like either you you separated them that it looks like it's two different words because they're too far from each other or you put them the letters too close to each other that it looks like it's one letter when it's supposed to be two letters number 17 you changed the format of the parshas like we explained in the in the chapters earlier number 18 you didn't write the songs in the right format number 19 you wrote the other regular part of the torah like the format of the shira Number twenty, Shatafa Yuris Blagi the Terum Shadvaram the Mitzvah Layakim, or you you sewed up the uh, parchments without uh, the with without without the type that sorry when you when you do the parchments you have to sew them together using threads that are made with kosher animals. So if you did it with non-pure animals, then it's no good. Any other things that we mentioned in the previous chapters, it is better to do that way. But if it's but if you didn't then it doesn't make the Sefer Torah invalid. Number two. Sefer Torah kosher, no yikim akutushi, Sefer Kavit Gadol. A Sefer Torah that is kosher, that doesn't have any of the 20 above invalidations, 
we give it extra honor. You cannot sell the sefer even if you have no bread to put on the table. Even if you have twenty sefer Torahs, even if you're selling an old one to buy a new one. The only reason there's only two exceptions to this rule when you're allowed to sell a sefer Torah. Number one, that you'll be able to study Torah with that money, or you or you can be able to marry a woman or uh, with that money, using that money. Obviously, that is if he has nothing else to sell in order to do those two things, study Torah and marry. Number three. A safe Torah that is worn out and it's disqualified and there's no way to really fix it. Um, you should put it in an earthen uh, vessel and you should bury it near a, a, a Torah sage. And that is the way we do the Geniza. That's why we bury it. Now, what about the uh, the garments on the outside, the mantle, what covers the Torah scroll, and that is worn out and you get a new one? You should use that for uh, for sh- uh, for clothing for a, a dead a, a person, someone that passes away. You use it to bury them. And that is the best way to reuse the covers of the Sefer Torah. Number four. The, wherever you put the Sefer Torah in, it, the mantle and the aura in the ark and the, the table that you read the Sefer Torah and the chair that you sit on, all of those things are, are considered holy objects. And you cannot just throw them away. If you, you can't use them anyway, then you have to bury them. But let's say the bima that the chazan stands on um, and uh, the place where children uh, study, those don't have a specific kedusha, specific holiness. Likewise, if you have those fancy uh, crowns on top, or you have like you know silver pomegranates or different things that uh, make the Sefer Torah more beautiful. Those are also considered holy. Also, let's see on the choil. You cannot just use them for mundane things. Unless you sold them actually in order to buy a Sefer Torah or Chumash, then you can uh, then then you can use them for mundane things. Number five. You're allowed to put a you're allowed to pile one sefer on top of the other, and of course on top of a chumash or on top of the agave nevim uksuvim on top of the prophets, on top of the writings. But you cannot put the prophets or the writings on top of a chumash, and you're not cannot put a chumash on top of a sefer Torah. Any holy only any holy scripture, any holy book, you're not allowed to throw them away. Um. um there was a sacred writings um, that people would write. You're, uh, any type of them, you're not allowed to go into a bathroom with them unless you cover them up. Number six. You shouldn't hold the Sefer Torah and go into a bathhouse or go into a bathroom or go to uh, or go to a basic forest. Go to a cemetery. Cemetery. Even if it's covered, you still can. You shouldn't read in a safe Torah unless you go at least four amis, four cubits away from a, a, a dead body. Or from a bathhouse, from a bathroom. Don't hold the safe Torah if you're naked. You cannot sit on a couch that a safe Torah is sitting on. Number seven. You're not allowed to engage in intimate intercourse um, in a house that has a Sefer Torah, unless you take it out or you put it in t- inside a vessel, inside another vessel that is not is specifically made for the Sefer Torah. That would be considered covering it enough in order for you to do that. But if the, this, if where you're putting the Sefer Torah was meant to put in the Sefer Torah, meaning an ark or something like that. Even if you have 10 uh, vessels, one within the other, it's considered like one vessel because it is meant for the Sefer Torah. Or what you should do is make a mechitza, make a, um, 
a distinction between you and a separation between you and the Sefer Torah that is high, 10 Tfachim, 10 cubits, if you have nowhere else to put the Sefer Torah for you to go. But if you have another place to go, then better do it somewhere else. Number eight, call out to Mayin, anyone that's impure, feel your needs. A filukuti mutalach sefer ter of likris by even a need a woman that's a need or a gentile is allowed to read from the sefer ter. Shendi v'tayim kavatu because a the Torah does not become impure. Vushla yela yada mitunafay se miluchlaches petit al yichet su yudei machkar higu by as long as your hands are not dirty, then you can. But if they are, please clean, wash your hands, sanitize twenty seconds on all the hands with soap, and then you can touch the sefer ter. If you see a Sefer Torah while you're walking, you got to stop. You should wait until the Sefer Torah goes where you can't see it anymore or it's put in the proper place and then you can sit down. Number 10. It's very important to have a specific place, the Ark as we know it today, in order that it should have a special uh, honor. What, what was in the Ten Commandments is in every Sefer Torah. Do not spit in front of the Sefer Torah. Do not become naked in front of it. Don't take, don't take off your shoes in front of it. Don't put it on your head. Like, you know, don't hold it like it's a, it's a, it's a weight. Don't turn your back to the Sefer Torah. Unless there was something... Uh, a, a separation of a chitz of 10 cubits high between you and the Sefer Torah. Number 11, the final offer today. If you are traveling and you had a Sefer Torah, lay next Sefer Torah, say a sack. Don't put the Sefer Torah in a, in a sack. Put it on the donkey and travel. If you're afraid of someone stealing from you and that was a way to keep it safe, then you can. If he's not afraid, what he should do is hold it against his chest. And travel that way. Anyone that's sitting in front of the Torah should sit with the right honor and, and with fear and uh, with the with the with the right type of respect. Because the Torah is the covenant between God and the Jews for all inhabitants on the earth. like it says in the Torah of that it shall be as a testimony for you. A person must honor the Torah school. To uh, based on his potential as much as he can. Amr Chachamim Roshen, our sages don't tell us. Call the Mechabed Satera. Anyone that honors the Torah, Gufa, call the Mechabed Satera. Sorry, someone that de- desecrates the Torah, Gufa Bechol Ala Briyos. This person will be desecrated by other people. Bechol Mechabed Satera. Anyone that honors the Torah, Gufa Bechol Mechabed Ala Briyos. This person will be honored by people. Nigmar Lichel Sefer Torah Rachshmai. We have finished the laws of Sefer Torah with God's help. Baruch Hashem, beautiful. Thank you. Rabbi Yosef. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? Leia, go ahead. One second. Everybody, let me. Hello, Rabbi Yosef. Everybody, can I, how do you unmute everybody? Wait, label's not there. I just wanted to say that my father-in-law, bless his soul, um, was a soldier in the um, Czech army, I believe, and he saw a synagogue burning, so he took out the Sefer Torah and he he, he placed it on his back and, and he took it um, back to Israel from uh, wherever, Czechoslovakia, I think it was, yeah. He placed it on his back and he took it all the way back home, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. All right. Any other questions, comments? Any other? Um, go ahead, uh, Abigail. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. Not, okay. Uh, when uh, your son Yosef said that a Sefer Torah in a house you cannot get intimate, I know a few people they have Sefer Torah in their house. Where? No, do- yeah. No. So you have to remember a house back then was like one room. Right. Okay. Okay. So it, it means if it's in another room, it doesn't mean in the complete house. Okay. Just, just in that room, you can make um, ten tefachim, which is about forty inches, a separation, a wall that separates, okay. and then you could have relations. So if it's in another room entirely, then it's not an issue. So okay. yeah, that that's the uh, 
the um, the the halach. I meant in the same room that you're in. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> Shouldn't uh, all right, make that mistake. Davida, please share with us. Whoever can put on their camera is amazing. Davida, your hands up. Bye bye. She's having trouble unmuting. Um, okay, so I will ask her to unmute. I'm, uh, ask oh, thank you, Rabbi Sai. Sure. Uh, Rabbi Sai, I was just wondering, I don't know if this was touched upon, but the animals that we use the hides for the parchment, mm -hmm. where did they get them from? Was it special animals specifically designed for this mitzvah? No, regular regular animals. Uh, you said um, Rambam said that his uh, sefer Torah was from ram's um, uh, hide, and um, it, it used to be it used to be that there's like three different types of quality of uh, uh, of parchment. Today, everything is made from the same quality, whether it's a mezuzah, a tefillin, or a sefer Torah from the cloth part. And uh, the truth is. I, you know, I'm, I'm now, you know, learning these, teaching these halachas. I've learned them before, but now that I teach them, <laughs> you know, I, I have much more of a um, desire to even know more, you know, more deeply the laws and some of the basic, uh, you know, fundaments, like uh, the question that you're asking about the, the hides. So I have a friend over here that actually does this, and I, I'm going to hop a schmooze with him to find out a little more details um, about you know how it's done and where where they're procured. I I don't they're not take you don't have to get it from uh you know you not get you don't have to get it from a kosher place, be, but you have to get it and you have to work it over yourself because remember if it's not done lishma if it's not done for the intent of of using it for the holy object then uh, it's a bit of a problem using this uh, using the hide right. But it can be from any um, any, any place. But I'm going to find out more details, God willing. Okay, remind me in a couple of days in the question in the question period. I'm going to find out. Any other questions, comments? Is there something in the chat that I missed? So again, remember, it has to come from a kosher animal, but it doesn't have to be slaughtered. It just has to be from a kosher animal. But it doesn't need to be slaughtered, so it could be a non co It could be, in other words, technically, it's it's a kosher animal that's not kosher for eating, but it's still a kosher animal. So it can be taken from different sources. The 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 hide, and then it needs to be worked over. I mean, interesting stuff. Any other questions? All right. How's everybody enjoying, lear enjoying learning Rambam? Uh, it's fascinating stuff. It's of, fascinating, uh, it is. Yeah. Enjoying I hope, it. Um, I, I hope it's uh, clear, not too quick. Was it good that a way I did it this way? So it was, uh, you saw the picture of it, so it made it clearer when I did this? Yes. Yeah? Yes, yeah. it was very good. Yeah, uh, okay. Yes, definitely. When, when, when possible, try, I'm going to try to do that. So then there's a greater clarity because, you know, when you see it, it it's easier than when you just hear it. <laughs> All right. Rabbi. Yes. Gotcha. Go ahead. It's easier to see when you um, have it on the share content screen rather than the like. You don't see it clearly like this? Yes, but typically, like if you have the um, Rambam going on the share screen, yeah. we actually see you holding it in the smaller screen, so it, it doesn't appear as ah, large. Oh, good point. Thank you, Bacia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then what's the best thing to do? Um, maybe sure. when you're explaining, um, when wow. you're explaining it while you're teaching, just to maybe minimize the Rashi wow. and see if we can get it on the larger screen. Yeah, I, I'll have to stop sharing screen and then show it to you. Maybe that's the way, and then go back to share screen. Or just yeah. try, or just try pinning yourself and unpinning. Uh, okay, okay, that's another way to pin. 
right. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Tim. Okay. So we got a couple of options here. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions, comments, thoughts? Beautiful. All right. We'll see everybody uh, tomorrow. Um, by the way, <laughs> the new Tanya journal came in, but I don't know what yeah. happened. It, it got printed in the big style. <laughs> It'd be very expensive to send. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <laughs> It'd be Oops. very expensive to spend. But whatever. great. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. Sign up so you can get it as sooner than later. So we can send you it have up. them there in, uh, at Shul Rabbi. Yes, I'll give to David tomorrow. Okay, unless you want Thank to. Thank you. <laughs> all right, folks, have a wonderful day. Thank you, Rabbi. Have a great day. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.